morning, everybody. Hoy. What's hoy? Yes, I am. I am chillaxing today. Just going to sit here and talk a little bit. Good morning, Lindsay. All right. Well, today's just going to be a little bit of a chat. Um, I'm not going to do any demonstration showing off anything. You just get to stare at my ugly mug today. Um, this was, this talk was kind of inspired by a, um, broadcast Kay did the other day. I think it was yesterday or was it the day before, um, where there was a bunch of people asking about how to go about learning, um, where to learn, what resources to give, um, should you learn traditional, should you learn modern? So I'm just going to talk for a minute. Um, I'll try to keep it somewhat short, but I want to cover a few things. Um, to start off with, um, I just, this, this is only going to help um, U.S. and Canadian people, but I just put on my website under the link section a list. Um, if you look under the teacher section, um, a list of all U.S. and Canadian guilds, the most complete that I know of. Um, links to their websites, links to contact information, etc. So if you're in the U.S. or Canada, it's going to be a uh, great resource for finding someone close to you um, to learn from. Yep, and here we go. Give me a second. All right. So um, what I want to start with is... Um, discussing how to start to learn um, well let's let's start with what hand um, you should learn um, people think that there are you should start with a certain hand um, while there are some that will be simpler to learn than others um, my thought on it is to learn what interests you go for what interests you don't necessarily you don't have to go for you know they say start pointed pin with copper plate start broad pin with like unshul or foundational um, while those are great and will teach you things uh, the the other thing is that um, you need to have an interest in it and if that if the hand doesn't interest you and bores you you won't continue with it so start there find the hand that you like um, and begin there the best way to find someone would be to look for a guild, um, a local calligraphy guild. That's going to be probably your best resource. Um, there's many, many teachers out there. And um, I don't know what go start please means. Um, there's many, many teachers out there, and there's there's good and there's bad. And I'm not going to cover who's good and who's bad. I'm going to cover how to how to sort those out on your own. Yes, it is hard for lefties. Yes, it is. Need to start a lefty guild just for you guys. I do not speak Russian. Um. So. Start with a guild, and you're going to meet all kinds of people there that are involved in lettering, have been involved in lettering for a long time, and they're going to be able to recommend people. Um, they're going to be able to recommend people that will teach and teach well. Um, my problem with teaching right now is is based upon calligraphy's in this huge, huge upswing. Um, there's all kinds of interest in it. There's all kinds of hobbyists. Um, there's all kinds of professionals. It's just there's a lot of people out there. And my problem with the teachers right now is the fact that someone takes a work weekend workshop and all of a sudden they have access to um, the Internet now and they start a website where they teach calligraphy. 
and that's going to spread nothing but bad information. Um, it's it's kind of hard to decipher a little bit. Um, so I, I'm doing this off the cuff, so I had, did not even plan any of this, so bear with me a little bit as I try and gather my thoughts somewhat. Um, if you take a weekend workshop, I'm sorry, you're not ready to teach. That, that's all there is to it. And because it's very simple to set up a WordPress blog and then all of a sudden you put all these nice images, you put all this nice information, it looks really professional, but you really don't know what you're talking about. And all you're doing is hindering penmanship and calligraphy by spreading bad information. So um, start with a guild. Start with someone that you know is involved in penmanship more than just on social media. Um, there are lots of great people on social media, but there's also lots of very bad people. Um, that's the problem with the certification thing. The, the Master Pinman program with Iampeth was originally founded under the assumption that these would be the people that you go to for teaching. Um, it would be kind of like an accreditation for teachers. Um, unfortunately, because it wasn't monitored well and such, um, it went in a very different direction. Um, there are there are master penmen that teach and teach very well, and there's master penmen that have the title because they want to have the title. So, I would start with the guilds. The guilds going to be your best information. Um, start with some place like Iampeth. Um, start with you know a, a reputable website an official website not a blog um, start there that's going to be your beginning point um, if if you see a blog that's not necessarily a great teacher um, and you know there are people that do have blogs and are great teachers so don't discredit that completely but if you go to those first reputable places you can get the information of what blogs are good, which ones have a good reputation, which teachers have a good reputation, which teachers are going to teach you properly. And I guess that leads into, this was, this was something that was touched on and it was kind of dropped yesterday in the conversation um, because it's, it's not something people want to discuss. Um, modern calligraphy versus traditional. You have the modern calligraphers who say the traditional is wrong, the traditionalists who say the modern's wrong, blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to give my thoughts on that. Um, and this leads into learning calligraphy as well and um, my thoughts on it too. So here we go. <laughs> Big sigh. Um, I don't have, yeah, exactly, put on a bulletproof vest. I don't have a problem with modern calligraphy at all. Um, if you think about it, every hand we do now, oh my lord, tap water, every hand we do now at one point in history was a modern script. So there's nothing wrong with a new hand. There's nothing wrong with a new script. Where my problem comes into modern revolves around the social media aspects I was just discussing. Um, because it is new, it is modern, there's not a set of rules necessarily for it. People think that if you write with a swell and a thin, that that is penmanship. Now, while artfully it could be considered that way, we're talking, I'm talking the, the basics of letter forms, the basics of what you're learning. Um, if you're going to learn modern calligraphy and you want to, wonderful. But the thing is you need to have the foundation to build upon to better your lettering. Um, just grabbing a pen and writing, like someone may say on a blog or whatever, saying just make this A it doesn't work that way. Number one, there's no reason behind the letter you're forming. Um, there needs to be some kind of reason. Um, and the second, in which I find even more important, 
is the fact that if you just grab a pen and you just write and you copy this letter A that someone made, you're going to be forming bad habits. If you form bad habits, it may hinder your ability to learn another hand in the future. The thing with the traditional hands is there are set teaching methods. There are set exercises you do to prepare yourself. There's, you know, you look at posture, you look at, and that's exactly it. You look at posture, you look at the way you hold your pen, you look at, you know, the, the slant you write and following on that slant. You develop a bad habit, that's going to make it a thousand times harder to learn than, than if you had never even touched a pen. You're hindering yourself more. So when you start any hand, there should be exercises, there should be drills, there's going to be the boring stuff that is not the, necessarily the most fun part, making it pretty, um, but it's absolutely critical and necessary because you need to have a foundation to build upon. Um, and, and not only that, you're, you're picking up a pen and you're doing something that's not natural for most people in the world and you're developing muscles that you don't use now. You're, you're, you're using muscles in your arms and you'll, you'll notice when you start a new hand that you, know, you have, may have a muscle that's really sore. Um, you need to develop that so you don't hurt yourself. Um, it, you could actually injure, you know, there, there's all kinds of different tendon and you know, muscle problems and all that. Drills are drills, uh, you know, Drills are not necessarily, I don't think, there are some for certain hands, but the important thing is learning to hold your pen um, and learn to do your ovals, learn to do, you know, your lines and a light touch. Um, you can grab any textbook that is from previous to 1900 that has to do with penmanship. You can download them for free on the internet and every single book has is devoted on this very pretty usually broad um, section of nothing but posture, drills, handhold, um, how to prepare yourself. And most people skip over that and go right to the letters and go, oh, look at the pretty letters, I want to make that. That first section of all those books is so very important if you're wanting to actually get better, if you're actually wanting to be able to develop a hand, if you're wanting to be able to broaden into other hands um, and you need to do that um, it, that's right once you know the rules then you can break them you know it, that's the thing you need to have a foundation to build upon and then you can take off once you know that foundation then you can take off and make your own modern make your own you know ye old fancy script that I use with swirly writing. That can be the, the, type, the name of your alphabet, but you need to have that basis to build upon that for. Um, and that is, that's my problem with the current teaching and modern calligraphy, not the hand itself. The, my problem is those that don't build upon that basis and that foundation for lettering. So, if you go somewhere in, you know, um, a, a website or a blog or whatever, and you're looking at signing up for a class, um, look, ask, how do they start you? Don't worry about what the letters are going to look like. Worry about how they're going to start you. If they're not saying you're going to do these boring drills and you're going to draw ovals until you can't stand an oval anymore, then pass on it because it's not going to help you. It's not going to help you get better. And um, I think that that is probably 99% of the basis of why everyone goes back and forth on modern versus traditional. Um, it, the traditional people look at all the time they put in and they know that these things that you have to do to develop yourself. And that's, I think that's why they pick on modern. Uh, I don't think it's because it's a different hand. Uh, I think it's more because there is no grounding in most of the modern. Um, and don't get me wrong, there are, there are teachers of modern, there are a couple people that I know that do modern, do it well, do it repetitious, there, you can see their rules behind it, um, and that's wonderful. Um, classes in New York City, on my web, I 
covered this right at first when I started this. On my website, um, yokepincompany.com, if you go to the link section and scroll down to the teaching area, there is a list of guilds for the U.S. and Canada that I just put up. Um, I wish I had one for the rest of the world, but I don't have <laughs> the time or <laughs> to collect them all. So ask around. Look for a guild in your area. Google is your friend. Google can find you all kinds of information. Yeah, we need a drill. Yep. So um, as far as starting hands, I'll, 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 I'll touch the... I'll touch on that real quick, and then uh, we'll kind of wrap this up. My teacher that I started with said that the best scripts to start with are as, are as follows because of the, the, the foundation they put behind everything. I was told copper plate for pointed pin, and I was told uncial or foundational for broad pin. Um, whether that's right is going to be up to each individual learning style, um, whether that's right is going to be whether you would have an interest. Don't just learn one of those hands because someone said so. Um, you've got to first have your interest. If, if you're not going to be interested in it, it's never going, you're never going to continue. Um, you know, if I wanted to learn copper plate and I started, oh, Lord, you started with Roman. <laughs> Good Lord, son. <laughs> If, um, you know, if I wanted to learn copper plate and I start, or I say I wanted to learn Spencerian and someone told me I needed to start with copper plate because, and, but I had no desire to learn copper plate, um, I would, I wouldn't continue. I honestly wouldn't. I would, you know, you, you got to do that, that hand that interests you, um, but have that basics, that foundation, the drills, the grip, the boring stuff that's going to be the basis for your learning. So, there it is. Hopefully, um, the modern and traditional people that go back and forth won't gang up on me and beat me up. <laughs> we'll see. So, like I said, check out um, that link on my website. That, uh, that file I got... I can't remember where I got that file from. So it's not my file, but it was one that was shared to be freely shared. So download that, that list of guilds, um, put them on your own websites, put them on your own blogs, post them wherever you want. It's not my file by any means. It's just a big, big list I have that I had access to and was brought up and I remembered it. So yeah, I will, uh, this scope will be up for the 24 and then uh, I will also post it on my YouTube. So, any questions for, I'll give a couple minutes um, to take questions if anyone has any. <sighs> what do I think about workshops from people that are good but only have one year experience? Um, We'll, we'll go into experience then, just for a second. Um, experience is not the length of time that you've been doing it. Um, experience is the amount of time you've put into it. So, say for example that John, John Smith, or John Doe, we'll use that. John Doe... Um, picked up a pen and he practiced one hour every week for a year. He's not ready to teach anything, in my opinion. However, if John Doe Jr. picked up a pen and practiced 18 hours a day for a year, he would have the basis to teach a little bit, provided he has that, what I said in the beginning, that foundation behind it. And he's not just making it up. Um, it's a little bit subjective. Um, and that's also been a source of somewhat some controversy is the amount of the length of time. The, the, other, the other side of the coin to that is 
that's exactly, there we go. Thank you for reminding me of that. That's something I say all the time. Writing and teaching are absolutely two different things. Absolutely two different things. I know some amazing calligraphers that do absolutely stunning work that are the worst teachers I've ever experienced. <laughs> it's, it's two completely different things. My, the, the lady that is local and teaches, she is not a master of any hand by any means, but she is a phenomenal teacher. Phenomenal. Um, so that plays into it. Um, back to the length of time someone's been doing it. The other, the other side of the coin is there's also something that become, that, that's to be said for experience um, gained by wisdom and time that you're doing it as well. Um, so I think if you're looking at a teacher, any teacher, you should consider, um, you should consider number one, looking at how they teach, looking at other instructions, maybe that they put out there or information they put out there, ask people, ask around. Um, I know, you know, <clears throat> the internet makes it very easy to access anyone and talk to anyone around the world. You can find out you know, how their experience was in teaching. Um, and just because, another thing to keep in mind is just because once one person had a great time and learned a lot from a teacher doesn't necessarily mean you will either. Um, there's, I can think of an example where um, I went to a class with someone that everyone else walked away thinking that was just really, really great, but I didn't get much out of it because it wasn't, taught in the style that I learned from, you know, there's, there, there's the podium type teaching, there's that one-on-one -on -one teaching, you need to know how you learn as well, so. So there you have it. Um, I think that kind of covers the basis of all of this, um, and the kind of the point I was trying to get across was don't just assume because someone has a pretty website that, you know, that they're the be all end all and don't take everything I, uh, you know, I say necessarily all true because I'm not the be all end all in all of this. I'm just sharing my opinions based on common sense, basically. So there you have it. You had however long this scope was just staring at my ugly mug. So. All right. Who's good to follow for your opinion? Go to, uh, oh, Lord. <laughs> you know what? I'm just not even going to touch on that because as sure as I say person A, B, and C, I'll forget D and E, and I don't want to offend anyone. So look around. So, and go download that list. Have a look around. Uh, find the local guilds in your area. And I hope this helps a little bit. And good, have a great day or evening, depending on where you're at in the world. So I will talk to you later and see you all soon. Bye.